Studio Wildcard's Ark Survival Evolved and Ascended is an interesting case study, and I say that because Evolved enjoyed a massive string of successes. Now, according to Snail Games, the game's publisher, back in mid-2022, it was claiming back then 76 plus million installs across PC and console. And I mean, for all intents and purposes, the content was there. The experience was unique, combining sci-fi with survival elements and, of course, dinosaurs. The studio had years of experience building this exact product. It had a loyal and rabid fan base. And on top of all of this, they were about to take the company public to investors. But then 2023 rolled around. A UE5 free upgrade was teased, then rescinded. Arc 2 again entered into this chaotic scene. Evolve support and official servers were shut down, and a new version, Survival Ascended, eventually exited that massive maelstrom to very mixed reviews, currently sitting at 58% positive scores on Steam. And so begins the crash for Arc. Welcome to the channel. This is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and it's been a while since I've touched on ARC, but recent events with Survival Ascended, along with some oddities with ARC 2, paired with questions concerning the overall sustainability of this entire franchise, brought me back for another round. In case you haven't done so already, take a moment to hit subscribe and ring that notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. And let's dive into the reason this franchise has crashed so damn hard. I've been going in and out of Ascended since it launched late last year, and for me it plays okay, but for a game that is essentially survival evolved, copy and pasted into Unreal Engine 5, it brings really nothing innovative or new to the ARC experience, other than some enhanced graphics, a ton of bugs and glitches, and despite being offered in one of the latest engine versions of UE5, it places a huge hardware requirement on its users. Now, I play on PC, and it feels like every day there's a new patch to download and install to fix this exploit or to address this other issue. Not to mention progress rollbacks to counter the ill-gotten gains of exploits, resetting hours of progress for players on official servers. It became a bit of a routine for me. Log into Steam, see the update queued for Arc Ascended, download it, and wait as the entire game has to patch itself, all 100 plus gigs. Again, this is 2024, using the latest in UE5 engine tech, with a game that is essentially the same game as back when it released in 2015. For me, it feels old. It feels dated, despite claims that Ascended was built on an entirely new and updated and fresh code base. And the numbers show us that with a 58% positive review score that has remained basically unchanged ever since Ascended launched in October 2023. We've also seen delay after delay as the development roadmap studio wildcard releases are never true to form, and the meme has justifiably become to add roughly two months to whatever month they say something will arrive, if not more. Further swirling under the surface of ARC's crash is the old version, Survival Evolved, which in every single metric is the exact opposite of Ascended, whereas Ascended bogs down even the most extreme of PCs, Evolved, despite being a much older game, just runs better. It has the content, it has the player base support, consistently outpacing Ascended, its newer brother for player counts, and the reviews of Very Positive are exactly the opposite of what we see for Ascended, which is crazy to imagine since Evolved now receives no official studio support, it has no official servers, and it's basically completely run through various communities and private server clusters, and is fueled by the love of players who have sunk thousands thousands upon thousands of hours into ARC. The reality is Evolved was canned and replaced. At the time, it was said to create an evergreen ARC experience, which would require a completely new game, restricting old players' progress to not being allowed to transfer over to the new. Now, it later came out in a public statement that ARC 
couldn't sustain itself financially without the proceeds of remarketing and remastering the old game into this newer version, Ark Ascended, pushing players back into the same arc they had seen for years, but broken up into a drip beat of releases and upcoming promises, all while simultaneously forcing a closure on the very servers and progress players had poured their blood, sweat, and tears into. And naturally, this pissed off a lot of ARC players. At the time, I called it for what I saw it as, an unannounced crowdfunding effort to feast on the loyal ARC fans so that enough money could be stockpiled to help fund the development of ARC 2. During some of my previous ARC video deep dives, I was lucky enough to enlist and use the help of VG Insights, a data tabulation organization that tracks all sorts of video gaming stats and what they were able to provide me on the ARC franchise didn't fill me with confidence. The numbers showed Snail and Wildcard had sacrificed Evolved and that loyal player base all on the altar of Ascended in a Hail Mary attempt to milk the players enough to make it across the finish line to the eventual and hopeful release of ARC 2. Now, of course, there was way more going on behind the scenes at that point. Snail's completely one-sided server hosting exclusivity deal with Nitrato, all for a $4 million loan to help bolster their payroll. And we've also seen them borrow huge sums of money at questionable interest rates, all coming due, of course, with large payouts. And essentially, this model became borrowing money to pay off debts while accumulating even more debt. It's just not a sustainable model, especially if that inflow of cash can't outpace the outgoing payouts. And so Studio Wildcard turned to that favorite video game industry plague, microtransactions, despite it being a complete reversal from their previous statements that they would never venture down this path. And to be clear, these are far beyond things like cosmetics and things like tool sets and you know the normal fluff you would see in a live service game. These are things like a dinosaur that can res another dead dino, Power Rangers crossovers, and a whole string of magical beasts that once purchased offer up game-changing PvP superpowers. Survival Ascended has completely turned to pay to win. It's turned to FOMO, to try to scrape up any available cash it can to just keep soldiering on. There was also an entire upcoming DLC called Bob's Tall Tales, which also sits at a mixed review score. Now, some of it you can access now, some is coming with future map releases, but this whole mixture of a remaster of an old game being drip fed back to the players, and all of this, by the way, sitting in early access status, once again, pissed off the players. It was a tough pill to swallow when Ascended was announced as paid, along with Evolved being simultaneously shuttered, but then it was slowly rolled out. It's a buggy mess, despite it being the same basic game with some slight tweaks. And so, yeah, players are being hit with quick follow-up DLC cost, five bucks for this pyromane that can be a shoulder-mounted flamethrower, or you can set everything ablaze and ride this thing into battle. Again, it was all too much, way too soon. Arriving here at the present, and the current ARC roadmap is a rocky one. Three maps have been delivered. The island, Scorched Earth, and the center end, while Scorched Earth did have some quite stunning areas, the center arrived as an unfinished and completely uninspired mess. They still have eight more maps they have to deliver, along with some sort of surprise addition and some sort of canonical add-on. And all development is said to overlap far into Arc 2's claimed release date of late 2024, early 2025. You've also got Survival of the Fittest, which was said to have received a ton of improvements, and it's basically a dead and gone mode. At this point, it looks to be abandoned. Now, the question, and the one that I constantly think about, is when or where will the reality of Arc Ascended's failure finally set in? Snail Games, which entered the NASDAQ at slightly over $3 a share back in late 2022, just saw its all-time low today hitting just 62 cents. Snail has also been hit with a compliance letter to get their financials in order and maintain over a dollar a share or face an eventual delisting from that same NASDAQ. 
And so again, this entire arc franchise situation just doesn't add up. One plus one no longer equals two. Arc Ascended sales weren't enough at launch and have tailed off even more since then. Currently, Wildcard is resorting to nickel and diming the player base with things like magical creatures and DLCs and, of course, premium mods. Snail is out there in left field trying to launch a new Web3 game called Project Hermes and has proven to us time and time again that they are not financially responsible. It feels and reads like an unorganized mess, even recently showing up in the Xbox announcement for Gamescom is having a playable demo for ARK 2, which was news to everyone. Everyone was left wondering what the hell this was about. Were we about to get a shadow drop? No. Eventually, a follow-up statement was made saying that ARK 2 was not going to be at Gamescom, and this was all just a big mix-up. But somewhere in there was an actual ARK Studio employee that dropped the ball because Xbox making that statement without prior approval is just not something I see happening. I have so many questions and major concerns about ARK, of course, starting off with when. When is it going to reach that point where it hits the wall and comes to a screeching and dramatic halt? Because at this point, it kind of feels like they've already driven over the cliff and they just somehow jumped out and they're holding on with the very tips of their fingernails. Everywhere I turn, I see what was in the past, a franchise that was, and still is to a degree, very revered, but has seemingly bumped into one bad decision after another. And for all of us, it kind of kicked off in early 2023. From that free UE5 upgrade tease to then a forced $100 plus bundle upgrade, of course the simultaneous closure of Survival Evolved, terrible business deals, debts upon debts, a remaster of a previous game that is slowly being released and of course is still in early access status. You've got questionable microtransactions and a whole hell of a lot more. And it all kind of leads to later this year or spring 2025, depending on who you believe, with that possible release of ARK 2. Now, I've said this openly and publicly, I don't see that game releasing, or at least releasing in anything other than a bare bones shell of what it should be, once again protected under the umbrella and protection of early access status. But again, how is ARK 2 being funded? Who's making it? And how does a studio that already operates on scraps simultaneously push out promised content for Ascended while also developing their vision for a Souls-like ARC release? Looking back on it all, and as they say, hindsight's 2020, and maybe back then if ARC 2 had released much closer to when it was first teased, maybe it would have a shot because, just to jog your memory, this was first shown off in 2020 at the Video Game Awards. But with everything that has happened between then and now, I'm not so sure. I mean, at this point, I'm not entirely confident that Ascended can actually reach its finish line. You need players, and you need them to constantly be spending money. And the sales charts and reviews are telling me that Ascended isn't selling nearly well enough, and the players are not liking it. Maybe that changes in a year from now when more maps have released, but there's only so much even the most dedicated gamer will endure before they uninstall your game and they don't return. And ARK feels like it's reached that point, at least for a lot of fans of this franchise. Once you step back from it all, when you kind of take a 30,000 foot overview and you start to think logically and kind of outside of the ARK fandom, you'll see you don't fund the future releases and simultaneous development of the next ARK release on just 13,000 players a day. But you know, overall that's just my take on it all. I truly wish the best for ARK and all of its fans, but this is a disaster of its own making. And like I said earlier, I'm honestly waiting for the eventual bombshell that it's all ended and the studio has been shuttered. Remember to hit subscribe and to ring that notifications bell. All my socials and links can be found in the video description. A huge thanks to the nearly 236,000 of you awesome ladies and gents who continue to support me and my content. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.